I invite you to call in. I invite you to express your frustrations and your anger. I just want you to keep it fact-based. I want you to keep it rational. Andrew in Scarborough. Hey, Andrew. Uh, hey, it's, uh, it's Andrew with an E. Um, yeah, I assume there was an E in Andrew. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm a, I'm a business ma uh, major at a school, and I've been doing a lot of research, and I think there are a lot more negatives and positives to having a baseball team in Toronto. Okay, well, you're not off to a great start, Andrew, with an E, so uh, let's hope you can turn this thing around in a hurry. I've been doing a lot of research. You know, there's just so much traffic and all the money. Like, I think we should sell and move to the team that's Salt Lake City. So I'm thinking about the outlook of the team, and I think... So you actually spent time on hold for, like, 35 minutes on hold so you could go on the radio and thoroughly embarrass yourself in front of hundreds of thousands of people. I don't know if that's um, commendable or just a statement about how much time people have to waste these days and the value of the investment in that waste of time for the opportunity to make a complete fool out of yourself on the radio using quite obviously a fake name so nobody actually knows who you are except maybe the one buddy or two who's listening. That's, uh, that's strong. Well done, uh, I think. I don't know. Uh, let's go to Jennifer in Toronto. Jennifer, help me make sense of all this. Hello. 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 Turn down your radio, please, like Josh told you to. Makes it far less confusing this this way. Yeah. All right. Go ahead. Seriously? Is this actually uh, happening right now? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Hi. Hi. Um, my question is about Russ Martin. Uh huh. Um, I know he's invaluable as a catcher for the pitching staff and blah, blah, blah. Yes. But where do you think he should be batting in the order? We've seen what he's gone through, not spring training last year. He had a great May or whatever it was. But um, I, I, I really hate seeing him up higher than seventh or eighth. <laughs> what do you think? I think he should be hitting seventh. I think he yeah. should be hitting seventh, but he's hitting yeah. sixth, so I'm not going to get my nose out of joint about that. Yeah. That's nine more at-bats over the course of the season. Uh, yeah. And John Gibbons seems to have a lot of faith in him. And he, I he, do you think that's misplaced? I'm asking honestly. I said I think he should hit seventh. Season. I think he should hit seventh. Yeah. Uh, but but I'm not going to get upset about him hitting sixth. I don't think he yeah, should be hitting behind I'm Justin kind of Smoke. His hand was a bit hurt tonight, so it's all from a mock. Yeah. I hate his defense, but could at least come in and pinch. And pinch hit. I well, that's know pretty that's awful of you. Thing. Yeah, I know. I and, know. You know what I did. I did mention. Don't forget too that that defense, Jared Salt. Thank you. You do a great job. Thank you. Don't forget Jared Saltamaki hit like what 180 last year. Oh, but I'm more, that's what I'm saying. I have more faith in him than Russell Martin over the last year. You shouldn't. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, okay. There's no need to apologize. I mean, unless the apology is it that you you can't read numbers, um, but I, I'm sure that you can. Uh, Russell Martin had a better offensive season last year than Jared Saltamaki did, even with the knee thing and even with the struggles and even with the, the strikeouts and all that stuff. Russell Martin was still a better offensive player than Jared Saltamaki. Um, so I think you're being a little unduly harsh on Russ. But, yeah, I, I do think that um, last year, and I mentioned this a bunch last year. I thought he was hitting one spot too high. I didn't understand why Martin was hitting ahead of Tulo on a regular basis in September. And I think he's hitting one spot high now, but that is not something to get. <laughs> Nothing to sneeze about, if you will. Not something to get upset about. Um, it's one spot in the order. And Russell Martin still gets Let's get right to it. Dave is in Toronto. Hello, Dave. Hi, uh, Mike. I hear you keep telling me that the Jays are good. They're a great yeah. team. And they stink. Not on the air. How about the air? You'll be on the air. So why don't you say hello to me? Yeah, you're on the air. Why is your buddy telling you you're not? 
I don't know. All right. All I know is these, uh, these chains, they stink. I don't know how anyone can even uh, think they're any good. They got what, one win, what? They hit a grand slam, and they can't win after that. I watched back in 92, 93. Now, those were great teams. Not one day did you say those days were bad, but these guys, they stink. Do you remember the game in 92 that they lost 24 to 2? Which one would that have been? It was in August. I don't know. It was like the and day they the traded for David Cohn. I don't know, but you said there wasn't yeah, one day where you said like, the Jays are bad. I believe they had already secured the playoff spot at that point in, in 92. You're they incorrect. Do you, do you think that there were any points in time in 92 or 93 that they, were, they didn't lose five out of six? In 92 and 93, there was not any doubt they were winning it all the way from beginning to end of the season. Okay. Thank so you for the call and for the revisionist history. That's not even remotely close to true. Not remotely close to true. There was so, especially in 1992, so much doubt that the Blue Jays, everybody thought they couldn't win when it counted. Uh, they had the reputation of being chokers late in the season. That 92 team, by the way, uh, lost five out of six in late April and early May. Uh, and then, oh, well, then they lost five out of six in the middle of May. Um well, that's only three out of four, four out of five, three out of four. They lost five out of six in August, twice. So let's all calm down, huh? We, we need to remember that we don't remember the things we're supposed to remember, right? The Blue Jays have lost five out of six. They did it three times last year. And as I just pointed out, they did it at least four times in 1992 when they went on to win the World Series. David, John in Toronto, you're next. Hello, John. Hello, Mike. How are you? I'm all right. Thank you. Um, I just want to make a couple comments, and uh, I understand how tough it must be for you guys. Uh, me? Trying to it's not tough for me. I get to watch baseball every day. Well, I know, but I mean, trying to make it interesting when a team is one and seven. I mean, you know, I hear all the the positives you uh, you found in every game, and and everyone else, and meanwhile, they're one and seven, and real good teams. Yes, they do. Real the good job. teams go one and seven all the time. But here's what I want to say: yeah. a couple things. Number one, yep. I truly expected this this year. <laughs> on paper, come on. Uh, on paper, the Jays absolutely should not miss the playoffs. Right. They should be contending with Boston. Yes. On paper. But here's what I felt. I felt last year, uh, I mean, there was a transition going over when this, when the baton was passed to Donaldson, you know, kind of making him the top dog in the, in the Jays. And I felt that uh, Batista was kind of passive aggressive. I mean, it was his team the whole way around. And I felt that there was a, a shift in energy. I felt there was a big shift in energy where, you know, when we're going back to last September and whatever, and particularly with the statements, I wish they would what not What statements? Have... Sorry? What statements? You said particularly with his statements. What statements? Or did I hear you wrong? Oh, about the $125 million, five no home team discount, oh. everything else. Oh, he didn't say a, a number, but, yeah, he did say no home team discount last March, right. yes. Okay, and, uh, and I, I think he did throw a number. At one point. He never said a number publicly, no. No? No. Okay. Um, anyway, I just felt that, you know, and I un understandably, it's tough for a guy to sort of pass the baton over. And I just felt that there was a dissension, almost a passive-aggressive energy. I mean, the Jays team, you, you, didn't, you don't see them jumping up and down, high-fiving each other. Yes, you do. It, sorry? Yes, you do. Not when they're one and seven, you don't. But are you suggesting that all last year, after Jose Bautista said what he said in spring training, it was like that? No, what I'm trying to get at is this. I think it was a good thing for Bautista to have been mo moved on. Okay? And I think, I think everybody is disappointed in uh, Atkins and uh, Shapiro. Okay, and can, I, can like I give you facts, though, John? Yeah, sure. All right, so let's hear it from the horse's mouth because I spoke to a bunch of Blue Jays today about this whole idea that there's a fracture in the clubhouse and that they're not mm -hmm. confident in each other. So first, let's hear what Aaron Sanchez had to say about that. 
There's nothing to be worried about. We're, we're, we're pulling for each other. We know what we got. We know what's in the tank. It's, it's just a matter of, uh, you know, it, it all coming together. You know, may that be one big hit, one big pitch. Uh, it's going to come. Now let's hear what Kevin Pilar had to say. This is stuff that teams go through throughout the year. Unfortunately, it happens at the beginning of the year when everything's so magnified. But, you know, we're a confident group. There's a reason we've been to the ALCS back-to-back -back years. You know, pretty much the same guys in here. Except for Morales, who's a World Series champ, I think we'll be just fine. And, um, you know, we just really got to get it going individually. There you go. Nobody's worried okay. down there. Nobody's... I'm going to ask you this question. Those yeah. are words. Mike, do you really, really hear the optimism in their voices? No, I in hear realism words, in their voices. I speak to these guys every day. I hear realism. I understand that they understand what a 162-game season is all about. Oh, no. <clears throat> you're, you're absolutely correct. It is a 162-game season. And, and all I'm saying is on paper, uh, absolutely, they should be contending, uh, you know, even with the improvements that Boston made. But all I'm trying to get at is, and again, total respect to personally to Atkins and Shapiro. But, uh, <clears throat> you know, to me, there are a couple of bean counters that came from a small market team and great baseball knowledge to find bargains out there. I don't think these guys can pull triggers on whatever. I think Batista actually being brought back was more to pacify the Jays fans than anything else. Okay. John, look, you've, you've got your, you, I don't know what, how exactly to put this here. You have, you have come to these conclusions, you, but you're doing it by trying to get in the heads of people that you don't know, that you've never talked to, that you see maybe in the occasional interview or you see on television. But and you the can, truth of the matter... You can hear people's voice. You can hear the sadness. Very clearly and... you're not. Because there is no sadness. There is no upset. There is no... There is nothing beyond we're not happy that we're one in seven or when I talk to them that we're one in six. Mm -hmm. Nothing beyond that. There is no... We no. didn't want Bautista back. There is no, no. I can't believe they didn't bring Edwin back. There is Do you no, really believe I don't they're going to say is... that? Come on, let's be No, realistic. no, but there's... They're not going to say that. Of course not, but you're reading, and I'm going to let you go. You're reading yeah. into things that you want to hear. This is, you know, this is... And it, 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 very clearly, it's not just you. But that's what our world is right now. And it's unfortunate and it's sad. But people have ideas of how they think things are. And then they take things and interpret them so that they fit into their already established ideas of how things are. And that's what you've done. And you've interpreted things that just aren't there. But because you want to fit it into your belief system... That's the conclusions you're drawing. And you're far from the only one who does it. Bob is in Bowmanville. Hey, Bob. Mike. Bob. Um, as I mentioned to your producer, the guy who takes in the calls, I guess, the whole it's early, that's, it's so tiring. Been listening to that for years. Is it true or is it not? Well, I mean. It's April you know, 12th. From there are 154 games left. Sure, I guess. Okay. All right. But, you know, the whole... It's just it's it's just a tired narrative to listen to, I guess. I'm sorry um, that facts tire you. Pardon me. I'm sorry that facts tire you. No, it's not that uh, you know. It's just that particular narrative. After a while, right? And it's not a narrative. It's the truth. There are 154 games left in the season. Right. It is absolutely. extraordinarily early. That is math. You're absolutely correct. Yeah. So uh, again, I'm sorry that it tires you, but it well, doesn't it make does. it any less true. It absolutely does. Okay. Two other Good things. Time. One question to Mark Shapiro and Ross Atkins, and then the question for you. Okay, well, Mark Shapiro and Ross Atkins aren't here, so they can't well, answer you know, the question. I'd like to just state it. Um, they resigned their right fielder. How's that working out for you would be the question to them. And the question to you was, earlier you mentioned things are going to, and I'm going to paraphrase, I hope I get the uh, word correct here, but you said things are going to improve dramatically or drastically yeah well both i think yeah my question to you is how do you know because i've 
been watching baseball for 40 years because right. baseball's been going on as in a, the major as leagues. A, as I have also. Right. Have, you ever, years, have you ever no. seen a team hit 190 for a season? Ever? Okay. Have you ever seen players? Oh, have I ever seen yeah. a team? No, I have not. No, you haven't. Have you no. ever seen all-star players all of a sudden start to hit like pitchers? Ever? Have I seen all-star players hit like pitchers? Over a full season, like Over the Blue Jays season. are doing right now. Mm. Have you ever seen anything like that? No. Right. So why on earth would it happen to the 2017? Well, I don't know. Movie? I mean, how do you know that things are just going to improve dramatically and drastically, I guess? Because... I mean, the, I, if I say to you, yeah. you know, the Chicago Cubs, after not winning a World Series for about a billion years, or yeah. what was it, 108 years, I think it was. Yeah, yeah. You know, if I said to you, well, they're just going to finish third this year, and they're going to be a non... The third in their division, they're going to be a non-factor. Yeah. I mean, how do I know? I don't. No, of course you, you don't. You know, like, I don't. That's not the so, same thing. How, how can you possibly equate those two statements? Well, I'm just saying, you know, just uh, just to make a statement like Like, how that. do you know the sun's going to come up tomorrow? The sun might not come up tomorrow. That's correct. It may not. Right. But, but to say that and think that that was actually going to happen would be asinine. Pardon me? To say that the sun's not going to come up tomorrow and actually think that there's a probability of that happening would be absolutely asinine. Right. Right. Yeah. Same thing. But to say that things are going to improve dramatically and drastically is, I think, is just a statement that is not necessarily true. Because? I mean, will things improve? Sure. Right. Sure, they can improve. They can go from hitting 190 as a team to 230. I don't know. know, And if they hit 230 as a team, that will be a drastic drop from last season. And, in fact, it would be an unprecedented drop in the 115-year history of the major leagues. So there is zero chance that the Blue Jays are going to finish this season hitting 230. Okay. I mean, you know. Therefore, since they're hitting 190 right now, and they're likely, I would say, likeliest to finish the season as a team hitting somewhere in the 260s, there will be a drastic and dramatic improvement to the offense. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Yes, we will. Well, we will. I mean, you, but the, we, yeah, we, we don't we, know. We will. No, we yeah. don't know. But what we do know is that the odds are overwhelming that it's going to happen. Overwhelming. We shall see. Okay. We shall see. Try not to stare out at the sun tomorrow, Bob, if it should come up in the morning. Both. Paul is in Moncton. Hello, Paul. Hey, thanks for taking my call, Mike. You're welcome. How is the New Brunswick? Oh, it's good, good, good. Listen, uh, do you think with uh, Russell Martin's struggle at the plate, it could uh, lead way for maybe Salta Lamakia and making the uh, everyday lineup? No. Just a hard no, eh? Yeah, <laughs> just a hard no. Uh, look, and John Gibbons said it today. If Russell Martin doesn't get a hit all year... He's still incredibly valuable to this team. Now, he got the hit tonight. Um, If Russell Martin hits 180, Russell Martin's still going to catch 130 games. If he's healthy, he's just going to hit ninth. But uh, he he does so much uh, for this team that that really relies on its pitching that, yeah, Russell Martin is period, end of story, the everyday catcher on this team if he's healthy. Well, I think I think the really the only other question here is uh, what's the magic number? Like, how many more losses here until we can give you? Sixty. Sixty. Although the Blue Jays are going to lose sixty-eight games this uh, sixty-seven games this year, you would think. I mean, I don't think this is a ninety-five win team. So, um, yeah, why would what what does Gibby have to do with any of this? Oh, we just we we got to start playing small ball here. Like we lose every year to small ball teams. They win the championship every year. Like we just got to adapt. You understand that both Cleveland in last year's ALCS and Kansas City in the ALCS before that hit more home runs than the Blue Jays did. Well, that's that's good for them, but they they well, also missed yeah, in that's a what that means. goal and base, a bunt, something here and there. We we can't rely on the grand slam here every game, Mike. I, I think you'd agree with that. I I agree with that completely. And I don't think the Blue Jays have been relying on the Grand Slam at all. Yeah, they hit a Grand Slam in the one game they won. But in six of the seven games they lost, if they'd gotten one single at the right time, the entirety of that game would have been turned around. So this is not because, I mean, it's it's brutal that they've only hit four home runs. You can't reasonably expect that they're only going to hit a home run every other game this year. 
um, when this offense should hit close to 200 homers. Um, so I, you know, I know I don't understand. Um, we got all the tools this year, and this yeah. is kind of our, I think, our last shot. So if we don't get a win, I think it's time for him to be pink flipped there. Well, okay. I appreciate it, and uh, and uh, thank you for the call. And I'm sure John Gibbons, who has managed the team to back-to-back -back American League Championship Series, certainly appreciates your support. Jim in Brooklyn, Ontario. Hey, Jim. Mike, how are you today? I'm all right, thanks. Go ahead. Good, good. I'm doing some math. Um, I think to be ultra-conservative, second wild card, they'd have to win 90 games, I would say. Second wild card was 88 wins last year. Okay, well, I'm, I'm about there, right? Um, and I, I did not have those numbers in front of me, but yeah. Um, do I? They'd have to go 88 and 54 if my math is right. Okay. You know, I'll take the 90 mark, or I guess, you know, 88 to 89. 90 I, and 72, so 88 and, yeah. and uh, 62 the rest of the way. Is it 62? Oh, yes. my math is wrong. Yes, it is. Okay. But that's um, okay. I don't see this collection of players hitting that mark. Yeah, just, no, they're terrible. You know, I mean, it would just be, they'd have to play out of their minds. You know, you don't know the severity of Sanchez's finger. You don't know the, well, I guess we can say the severity of Hap's elbow. Yeah. Thornis. I mean, yeah, I just... Those uh, are very valid points. Daunting, daunting the, the, the injuries get in the way. You know, the Boston Red Sox started the 2011 season 2-10. and 10. Do you know how many wins they finished with? I do not know. 90. There you go. And, you know, the, the thing is, baseball, and it, it is, it, it's certainly a lot tougher if Sanchez and Happ are going to be out for any length of time. But the beautiful thing about the game of baseball is that no matter how bad a team is, it's going to win five out of six at some point, eight out of 11 at some point. And the better a team is, the more chance it has of doing that. Uh, and the Blue Jays, despite this rotten start, are a good team playing extraordinarily poorly. No question about that. They're not as good as they would be with a, a full roster, very obviously, but this is, things that, uh, this is a thing that lots of teams go through all through the season. So if the Blue Jays run off a couple of eight and threes, then all of a sudden this two and ten is gone, and they're back at 500 or over. For me, it's the space in between the losing streaks and the winning streaks where you make your money and you make up your ground. Winning streaks are coming because even if the Blue Jays were to finish 62 and 100 this year, there would be a couple of winning streaks in there. So winning streaks are coming. No matter how daunting the math is, all it takes is one six-game win streak to undaunt the math. Yeah, I guess. I just that, look at the question of talent on this team, if you will. And um, what's, I mean, what's I, wrong with the I, talent on this team? Three days ago, we spoke, and I said, you know, they were well, a couple of days ago, I guess it was, but uh, old and slow. I don't see them as a team that's that. I don't see them as being good enough. Okay, so they go from 89 wins last year. <clears throat> They get, everybody gets a year older. They uh -huh. get no slower. And now it's a 75-win team? I, you know what? I just, I don't know. I don't, well, I'm not even going to get into the right fielder. I've said my piece about him in the past. It just, you know, and it's sort of kind of so far proven me right, at least in this. 12 games game. proves nothing about anyone. And look, I, I know, and I got to go, but I, I understand it looks terrible. I do. I understand it looks terrible and that there's, you know, there's no way to look at this team playing like it is, getting bombed today, losing two starting pitches in the same day, and thinking that they're not terrible. But to think that would be to, and I know this is what we do now in the world, but to think that would be to ignore pretty much everything that's ever happened in baseball since it started 115 years ago. Pretty much everything. Things can look really, really bad. And I don't know how many times I've said this over the years. A team is never as good as, as good it is. <laughs> I don't know how many times I've said it over the years because I can't even say it now. A team is never as good as it looks when it's playing really, really well. And it's never as bad as it is when it's playing really, really poorly. Because these Blue Jays look like they can't, they might not win another game all year. 
but we know they're going to, and we know they're going to win lots. How many lots is the question, and that we will not know for another five and a half months. That's how much long there is left in the season. You can give me crap for saying it's early all you want, but that doesn't change the calendar. It is April 16th. There are 150 games left. Period. John in Toronto. Hello, John. Hey, how are you? I'm all right. Go ahead. Um, no, a couple things. One is, uh, you know, I always believe in the old adage. Uh, there's excuses and results. And I don't know what that means. Excuses don't count. It's whatever the score is. In other words, the record is the record is the record. Sure. And um, personally, I think it's over. I didn't expect much this year. Well, I why think. would you? Well, I really didn't. Okay. I mean, you're entitled. I mean, uh, the bottom line is this. I don't think that there could be anybody who could be happy with what this team was left with at the end of last season to what we ended up starting with. I don't think there's anybody who can be happy with what transpired. Batista shouldn't have been back on this team. Edwin should have been signed. There are a whole lot. When you have Goins and Smoke, you know, it's just mind-boggling. In other words, to get into a position to have that pitching staff that we had at the end of last year, to have the Donaldsons, the Tuliski, to have all these components in there, okay? Uh -huh. And to, to, I don't know how to put it, you know, to drop the ball and not build off that. I mean, Rogers is doing great. You know, well, what, what, what should they have done? I'm sorry? What should they have done? Well, first of all... I mean, you said sign Edwin. Fine. They, they could have signed Edwin. Kendrys Morales is not a bad replacement. Kendrys Morales no, it's, to, it's at this point is... not a bad replacement. Well, what's it about? It's, well... He's out, outperforming Edwin to this point in the season. That, but that doesn't mean anything. I mean, if Edwin was on here, he might be batting 400 and have six home runs already. There's a zero reason to believe that, but okay. Well, I happen to also believe that there's a, the, a part of people, there's an energy, uh, you know, to be where you want to be. Sure. And you will outperform yourself being happy where you are. And I think the position is we're not happy and he's not happy. The only one that's happy is Rogers. I mean, they, they got their, everything is much more expensive, costs us that much more to go and did really nothing to take this team to where it should have been. And uh, just, to me, it's just really sad, a waste of a year. And now really got to consider and salvage what pitching and some of the contracts we have left to see, because these bean counters are not going to, they're not going to enhance this team in any great way. But okay, I, thank, thank, I, thank, I, you, thank you, John. Look, it's okay to be despondent. Um, it's okay to not be happy. It's not okay to make stuff up. Mark Shapiro and Ross Atkins may not be doing things the way that you want them to do things, but they did not come here to destroy this team and build a loser and not take advantage of what was here when they got here. Um, the, the changes that were made in the offseason, maybe they treaded water a little bit more than improving, but they still have the highest payroll in club history. Um, and... And look, yeah, everybody knows Edwin was screwed up and he would rather be here. But to suggest, again, that, that uh, they're, they're here trying to lose um, is just silly. It really is. And I've gone over the offseason stuff hundreds of times. The starting rotation is better. They switched out Michael Saunders for Steve Pierce, which you would think would be an improvement, but Pierce is off to a terrible start. They held on to Bautista, who led the team in on base last year, I think, uh, or, or might have been second or third. Um, they replaced Edwin Encarnacion with Kendrys Morales, who's really, really good. Uh, they brought in a couple of veterans in the bullpen, and they didn't start with Drew Storn and Jesse Chavez this year like they did last year. Um, I really didn't think there was an argument to be made that the Blue Jays were significantly worse starting the, the 2017 season than they were when they finished 2016. 
Obviously, they have started 2-11, and 11, but if anyone can't see past that and understand that no team in baseball has ever been this bad over an extended period, and especially a team that should do well, everyone's got their lulls. This is a big one. But, hey, again, last year the Cubs went 1-9. and nine. They went 5-15, and 15, and they still won 103 games. I point back to the 2011 Red Sox, started the season 2-10, and 10, and were nine games up in the AL East on September 1st. The 93 Blue Jays had a 1-10. and 10. A team is never as bad as it looks when it's going badly, and the Blue Jays of 2017 could not be going much badlier. In Maple, hey, Danny. Michael, how are you? Good, thanks. Go ahead. Uh, Michael, I think uh, the, the secret is out on these Blue Jays. Uh, and I, what, what I mean by that is uh, there's video, I'm pretty sure, that's been uh, taken when the Jays played against the Cleveland Indians in the championship series last year. And I think a lot of teams are studying this video, and, and this, this video in particular that they have found is releasing the, the weaknesses of this hitting team, supposed hitting team. Now, what this has done is made the Jays an all-or-nothing team. So, it all stemmed from that. I believe it all stemmed from that. So, what you're, from that. what you're suggesting is that after 10 years in the major leagues, Troy Tulowitzki's finally been figured out. After eight years performing at a superstar level, Jose Bautista's finally been figured out. After three years of finishing in the top eight in the MVP race every season, Josh Donaldson has finally been figured out. That's what you're suggesting? For, for, for the most part, yes, Mike. I think that they have been figured out. And like I said, they know that this team is over the fences team. Yes. Okay. You, you understand how irrational that sounds, right? How, how, why does it sound irrational? Why would it take 10 years? Why after 10 years of hitting 300 have pitchers finally discovered Troy Tulowitzki's weaknesses? Why after seven years of being the best slugger in the game, why did it take them seven years to figure out Jose Bautista? So tell me something, Mike. Why is it that the first 10, 10 11 games that the Jays have been playing, they can't even hit a beach ball? Well, they've hit a few beach balls, but they're certainly struggling offensively. And why? Because hitting a baseball is the uh, successfully is the most difficult thing to do in professional sports and because all teams go through slumps sometimes and the Blue Jays are going through one right now. Why did the Blue Jays sit in the beginning of last year, in the, in the beginning of the season? But if they got figured out in last year in April, how did they hit from May to August? Well, when, they were, when they were one of the best offensive teams in the game. Why, so they just why, figured them out for April but not for the next four months? Why did the Blue Jays not hit a game? That's three? not an answer. But I'm asking you a question. Why did the Blue Jays not hit against Cleveland? Because they threw off because in, to them. I, I, because in correct? any five games, when the, especially when the guy who should have won the Cy Young Award is pitching against you twice, in any five games, any team can be absolutely wonderful or absolutely terrible. Mike, they couldn't hit off Ryan Merritt, and Merritt is not even on a Cleveland Indians team. Yeah, they couldn't hit off Ryan Merritt, and that was embarrassing as hell. But happens so you, sometimes. How so does Jesse that, Litch in his major league debut throw eight and two thirds innings of two hit shutout? So why have why have it has it been pretty consistent that these pitchers have the Jays can only get muster only two or three hits in in a nine inning game? Uh, first of all, it hasn't happened at all yet this year that the Blue Jays have only mustered two or three hits in a nine inning game. But second of all, I think our 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 primary disagreement is with your use of the word consistent. Over the first 11 games of a season and the last five games of last season where you had Edwin Encarnacion and you know a healthy Josh Donaldson and no Devin Travis and all that, a different look, um, you're taking that 16-game sample and you're taking that first month of April last year and saying that shows you a definite conclusion where you're completely ignoring the fact that if they figured them out in April, that the Blue Jays may through... May, June, July, August offense was producing at a well above major league average rate. So how do you figure them out for a month, but then not for the rest of the time? Well, Mike, you know what? I, I, I really, I wish I had an answer for that. But I do too. At the same time, I believe that this team has been solved. 
and you're entitled to that belief, Danny. Grow I, I, up feed stuff, right? Look, that's, Danny. That's basically what it is. No, it's not. You're completely entitled to have your beliefs. I appreciate the call. We certainly live in an era right now where people believe what they believe, no matter how many actual facts are thrown at them that would dispute those beliefs. So you're continued to go on believing what you want to believe. But if you did a little bit of rudimentary research or critical thinking, you know, there's a reason why when I ask you the question, how could they possibly have hit above the league average for four months last year, you don't have an answer. You don't have an answer because your theory doesn't hold up. But you can continue to believe it if you want. Evan, let's start things off with Rob in Aurora. Hey, Rob, you're the leadoff man on Blue Jays Talk. Go right ahead. My couple things for you. First, you see streaks end with, you know, when you have a winning streak, you can have an ugly win, and then you see the streak end. That happened lots of times in Jays history. I think this is one of those, be the eternal optimist tonight, that, yeah, I could see the Jays finding their legs offensively, and sooner or later, the three remaining healthy starters we have are going to you know, throw a good game when we have some offense and we'll have a few wins as we go along here. But my, my, my biggest reason to call tonight is, not, and I think Bautista will be on the wall of fame. He's probably arguably one of the top three players that's ever played in Toronto. But when I saw him overthrow the cutoff man on that replay on television, to me it looked obvious that he was trying to, over, like, it, it was like, screw you, I'm throwing this ball as far as I can throw it. It was a rookie mistake from a guy who's supposed to be a leader on this team. And I think it's, I've got to the point now where it's time for him to go. He's been great. We got a lot of value out of his contract. But I'm surprised that Gibbons didn't point to the end of the bench and say, sit right there, because that, that's a mistake a rookie doesn't make in a divisional game when we're trying to break a losing streak. It was awful. It was 20 feet over Travis's head. It wasn't even close to the backup cut off man he was just throwing that as far as he could throw like some kid playing peewee baseball it was terrible and that yeah, guy got you got you riled up huh oh it wow it was ugly to watch no I, yeah I, well, no it was a terrible throw it was nowhere near either cutoff man absolutely you're talking about the ball on the double by hanley yeah. ramirez in the fifth inning um it was it was nowhere near either cutoff man it was a, a an awful throw but there was no screw you element to it there this was no uh, if anything this was him trying to do too much and uh and hope that the arm was is uh you know, that we've seen flashes of a few times this year, hope that it's back to what it used to be and that he could uh, he could get the ball all the way back wow. in. But, no, it's this was... It's pathetically selfish. No. Now, that's that's, the, that's the, the, you know, the rumor mill around him, why other teams maybe shied away from him, and certainly some some general managers in the league said some awful things about him that they probably shouldn't have said. One, gen oh, one general manager trying to yeah. cover up for the fact that he wasn't willing to spend that kind of money on an outfielder. Well, so that's one way to look at it. Well, it's, it's the truth. You know, I don't know if it's the truth. It's, it's the, the truth because any factor. general manager who turns away an all-star because his fans don't like him would be fired immediately. But there's 28 general managers who didn't yeah. sign Bautista. Right. Other than him. Yeah, yeah. No, that's true. There are there are 29 general managers who didn't sign Bautista, and it wasn't because they didn't like him. It was because wow. he wanted too much money. He wanted too much guarantee. Uh, and apparently he, he says he turned down better offers from two or three teams. There were rumors that the Rays and Phillies uh, were in there trying to trying to sign him, but he didn't go there because they don't have a chance to win this year. Well, and the other thing that irks me about him is, you know, it, everybody's going to struggle, and I'll, I'll give the guy he's trying. If I went to spring training this year, and he looked good, and I don't know what happened to that guy, whether he hurt his back, but tonight, first couple of bats, I watched closely, see, is he doing something different? And he's, he's pulling his head off the ball. He's missing pitches he usually squares up. Yeah. He's flying open early, and he's got that warning track power that you hate to see a guy at the end of his career <laughs> decline to. And he's doing the showboating with the big swing and taking the balls out when it lands on the warning track of somebody's glove. It's just like, you know what? It's just time. It's just, it's, it's been a great run, but it's time to put him at the end of the bench and play some other guys. And frankly, and it's not just because of the articles in the newspaper had this. I was talking about this with other fans at the game the other day who go to a lot of games and sit around my area. We're all saying this could be the best thing that would ever happen to the Jays. Because unlike the Phillies and other teams who waited too long, you know, it's, it's bad luck. You had five or six guys all hit the skid at the same time, and now you got injuries. 
There's no way after 80 games, like you said the other night, that they're going to be any better than 30 and 50. Just the math doesn't make sense to see a record. They would have to play 500 ball between now and the end of June to end up at, what, 35 and 45 or 34 and 46? And if they, you know, whatever, if they play 500 ball, they'll be nine games under 500 because they're nine games under right, 500 right, right now. So, okay, so here's the thing. I would suggest, and Rob, I appreciate the passion. I really do. Um, uh, I, I would suggest you go to Vegas and you bet that the Blue Jays would have no more than 30 wins after 80 games because uh, you'll get good odds and chances are you'll lose your money. Um, it's, it's a terrible start. And Josh Donaldson's hurt. And Jay Happ and Aaron Sanchez are going to miss a couple of starts each. But this team is not this bad. No team has ever been this bad. They're playing terribly, although today, you know, again, this, this was more of a normal game today as opposed to uh, all those, you know, the first seven, eight, nine games of the season where you thought, man, are they ever going to get a hit and they're going to uh, flit away this wonderful starting pitching performance. This was more like a normal, okay, this was a game that, that was – relatively well played didn't get great performance out of your starting pitcher you knocked around their starting pitcher a little bit and you wound up losing so i i take a little bit of uh of solace from that but jose bautista is not going to hammer to the end of the bench jose bautista is not going to hit 150 this year with no home runs the blue jays are are not going to be 30 and 50 after 80 games you have to you have to understand it for what it is and understand what this team is and not overreact to uh, a couple of crappy weeks and you know we'll see what happens from this point on i appreciate the call we'll get to more but we got to take a break uh, when we come back more blue jays talk but david is driving truck in pennsylvania hello david hey mike how are you i'm good go ahead Mike, I love listening to you talk. I love your passion. You're so positive. But I got to agree with the last caller. It, the Batista Edwin era w ended in the winter. You know, and we've had a lot of bad breaks. We lost Saunders. We could have had Jay Bruce. And that could have been our right fielder. We, we have a horrible outfield, and we have no leadoff hitter, and we have no Edwin. And Edwin would be our catalyst. Maybe we might be five and six. I, I just, I'm frustrated with that last caller. We, we have no leadership. I think that's what he was trying to say. No leadership on this team. I thought Stroman would step up tonight. And it didn't happen. It was a very boring, frustrating game to listen. I just don't think we have it this year, man. Okay. I mean, there's a lot of angry and there's a lot of frustrated in there. And, and I don't blame you for the angry and frustrated. There's a lot of not making sense in there as well. Um, but that's what angry and frustrated does. Uh, to suggest that having Edwin Encarnacion leave and replacing him with, again, the cleanup hitter for the World Series champions two years ago, uh, and everybody else is back, but now the Blue Jays have no leadership is, is a ridiculous assertion, uh, which I'm sure you're aware of. Um, I didn't find tonight boring. I thought this was a, a nice little, you know, they had the lead early. They almost came back. They, they tried to add on, almost came back once, came back in the ninth. Um, this was a, a less boring game for me than most of the other 11 losses that they've had this year. Um, to suggest that having Edwin Encarnacion over Kendrys Morales is three wins in 11 games is nuts, especially when you consider that Edwin's hitting 200 for Cleveland right now. Um, the leadoff hitter had three doubles today, so I don't think that's the issue either. Um, look, they're not, they're not playing well. Uh, there, there's no two ways about it. They're not playing well, but grand pronouncements suggesting that Jose Bautista uh, turned from a 30 home run guy to a pitcher in one winter um, that, that, I mean, does, just doesn't make any sense. Well, buddy, the, he's, he's playing horrible. Yep. Two years ago, he stood in front of the world and said, I know what I'm worth. I'm worth $25 million for five years. That was last year, and he never actually said a number at all. Well, I, I know, buddy. But, you know, keep up what you're doing. You're doing a great job. And I, uh, I, I think it's over, man. 
All right. It's Look, I, I appreciate the call, David, and you're entitled to believe that. It is April 18th, and nothing that anybody says about anything will change the fact that it is April 18th, and there are 149 games left. Uh, but, if you know, look, it doesn't cost anybody anything to say the season's over. You know, if, if you're one of those Blue Jays fans who says it's over, they're finished, they're done, then if that makes you feel good, then say it as much as you want because it doesn't cost you anything and it doesn't mean anything. All it means is that if they don't make the playoffs, you can say I said it in April because I knew, which you don't, but you can say that you did. And if they do, you'll be ecstatic and you'll forget you ever said it. Right? Do you think that in 2011 when the Boston Red Sox entered play in September with a nine-game lead in the AL East, anyone was tearing their hair out about the fact that they had started that season 2-10? and 10? Or anybody even remembered? Of course not. So say it's over all you want. It doesn't make a difference. And it doesn't mean anything. Jamie is in Kitchener. Hello, Jamie. Hi, Mike. Uh, I'm thinking there's nothing wrong with this team that changing the manager won't help. Unless you replace him with uh, Bobby Valentine or something. Because they're all carrying doubt and clutter to the field. And you like to say that the manager doesn't swing the bat or throw the pitch. Only because it's true. Yes, he does. Like, I mean, every player that takes the field, yeah. they do it with every piece of good advice they ever garnered along the way. And uh, a good management team helps these guys. These guys are playing just like uh, last year in the fall. Uh, September when they didn't know if they were going to make, they were playing scared. And that's not the way I want my manager's team to take the field. Look, the manager doesn't swing the bat. The manager doesn't throw the, any yeah, pitches. The manager the doesn't have... Guys. Pardon? He goes to the plate with those guys. Every bit of good advice he ever got along the way goes to the plate with them. Right, and no amount of good advice is going to turn a guy from a 130 hitter into a 300 hitter. Well, I'm surprised to hear you say that. Since Why? It's true. Got a, uh, a psychology. That's, that, that's kind of uh, shocking to hear you say that. But Look, uh, managers aren't magic. My uh, two uh, things, uh, uh, two guys I'd call if I uh, was going to take the manager, yep. uh, hire a manager. Two guys I'd call is uh, Dave Winfield and Kevin Seitzer who combined have managed exactly zero games of professional baseball. Yeah, but they might be good managers. I, I mean, I'm, I'm just saying I'd interview them. Those sure, they, they might. The so might the guy who's taken team. a team to the American League Championship Series two years in a row. Oh, yeah, but he made mistakes long before that. Like, I mean, playing Reyes, it wasn't until, it wasn't until they took this mistake of playing Reyes away from him that all of a sudden everybody said, oh, you got to play Reyes. You and think he kept that playing them every you, day, and when they finally took it away from him, yeah. they steamrolled the entire league with a guy who replaced him hitting only 238. Right. You, you you think it was John Gibbons' decision to have Jose Reyes be the everyday shortstop? Well, it, honestly, don't tell me. Well, honestly, do you think that was John Gibbons' decision that Jose Reyes was the Blue Jays' everyday shortstop? Uh, you know what? If he had any integrity. He would have done what was best for the rest of the club, for his pitching staff, and he would have said, look, I am not going to put that uh, park bench out at short. If he had any integrity, he would have said that to uh, Anthopolis and Beeston. And okay, Jamie, thank you for the call. Look, uh, and again, uh, I welcome your venting. I welcome your upset. I welcome your anger. It's all valid, but I would just like the reasons behind it to be valid. Managers are not magic. They play with the players that they are provided with. And that's all they can do. John Gibbons is not the guy who's going to say, you know what, Jose Reyes? Sit your $22 million a year down on the bench. Ryan Goins is going to be my starting shortstop and not hit. That's just not the way things work managers first of all don't have that kind of power and second of all don't have that kind of power there is this idea that a coach can make you better a coach with his great advice and rah-rah and wonderful speech making can motivate a team to go out there and run through a brick wall and you know what maybe that helps in football where you can actually take the ball away from the other guy maybe that helps in hockey where you can go win the battle in the corner, marginally.
maybe it helps. Baseball, you get your turn, they get their turn. Grit doesn't win. You can't win a game in baseball by wanting it more. You still got to get 27 outs, and you still got to not that, let them get you out 27 times enough to score the runs to win. Manager as great motivator is simply not a thing. And it amazes me how quickly people are ready to turn on, if, especially if you believe that stuff about managing, a guy who managed his team into the American League Championship Series two years in a row. Johnny is in Mississauga. Hey, Johnny. Hey, Mike. Um, I just want to talk about the game today. Um, another gem by Marcus Stroman, you know, and um, you saw at the end of the game, or near the end of the game when he got taken out, how he just stormed off the field or into the, cl into the clubhouse. And it's just like guys like Grilly and the bullpen just keep blowing games. And I just can't believe, and I listen to you every day on Jay's talk at work, and I just can't believe how you just keep pushing the rhetoric that this team can win games and they actually have a chance to make the playoffs when they have to win at a 97% clip from here on out. I mean, this is the major leagues. Get real, get out. You are angry. And most people, when they're angry are not big on factual information. And so, as that would appear, you are angry and not big on factual information. The Blue Jays have to win at a 97% clip the rest of the way to make the playoffs. That's like Trumpian in its ludicrosity. Of course that's not true. They have to win 97% of their games the rest of the way to make the playoffs. Now, you might have meant that they need to win at a 97-win pace to make the playoffs the rest of the way. And that may well be true. And you know what? They might not make the playoffs. Like, going into day one of the season, they might not make the playoffs. And they still might not make the playoffs. And they might not play at, you know, win 60% of their games the rest of the way because there are 140, 139 games left. So if you win 60% of their games the rest of the way, that gets you to 89 wins. Might not happen. It might, but there might be a two-week span, as there is for almost every playoff team, where they win 80% of their games. And that'll change all that math around. Now, you obviously have to do it. And you have to win two freaking games in a row, which the Blue Jays haven't been able to do at any point in time this season before you can even start talking about that. But, you know, if you want to talk about Marcus Stroman heatedly running off the field and going into the clubhouse all angry at being taken out of the game, which didn't happen, go ahead. I mean, I guess it happened for you in your world. I don't know what else to tell you. Matt's in Stouffville. Hey, Matt. Hey, Mike. A uh, lifelong Jays fan here. I've uh, been through a lot of ups and downs. I think the most disappointing part is the managers, the uh, GM and uh, the management came in from Cleveland, very highly touted. Do you, you think they're really good? They came with, uh, you know, their Yale degrees and everyone loves them. And, you know, if they're that good, uh -huh. did they know that this team was going to be as bad as they were? And that was the plan, hype the team up, sell the tickets. I think that's where a lot of anger is coming from. Why? Um, wait wait a minute. Do you think a lot of anger is coming from the fact that, the, they, that Mark Shapiro and Ross Atkins knew the team would be the worst in the major leagues but told us it was going to be really good so they could sell a lot of tickets? Yes. Really? Because the other alternative is they didn't know, uh -huh. which is gross incompetence in that job. Or so nobody knew? What is it? Yeah, it's it's I mean, maybe that paid to know, Mike. The well, they're, not, is. they're not paid to be fortune tellers. They're well, not paid to be to clairvoyant. Be in baseball, though. No, nobody can know that. But nobody I think can know more that. They're focused on cutting coupons and and you know, running the highest payroll that the team's ever run in club history. Well, they're losing a big fan base. Is all I'm saying. And I've been through bad years, but they always set us up for bad years. That's that not year. true at all. Come on. That is not true at all. How many J.P. Ricciardi years did we think the Blue Jays had a playoff team? Six out of eight? 
five out of five out of eight all everything aligns under the sun we might make it these guys were talking about playoffs and i mean how can you be that wrong if that's your job well it's first of all 23 games in i know but they're wrong well, first so of all, far, right? it's it's still 23 games in. There is no so far with playoffs. There's no so far playoffs. You know, there's no, um, you know, these teams are in the so far playoffs at the end of May. It doesn't work that way. But also, I think you're, what you're looking for, again, is, is the same thing I was talking about with the first caller. You're looking for the people who are running a team to be magicians. You're looking for them to, to be clairvoyant. No one could have anticipated the Blue Jays starting 6-17. and 17. And the fact that Mark Shapiro and Ross Atkins get paid a lot of money and put this team together doesn't mean that they, they knew that this team was going to get off to, like, what, the worst April in club history or if not close to it. Um, are you saying early on you looked at that pen and said there wasn't a problem? There's a difference between there wasn't a problem and eight blown saves in 23 games, don't you think? Well, I- it's just playing out the way everybody looked at it. And it's it playing out the way. Ex- it's playing out the way, Matt. Let's be honest. Can we be honest? Yeah, I know you're upset, please. right? I'm not and I know upset. you said you're allowed to. Of course you are. Look, can we just honestly say it's playing out the way? Absolutely nobody thought it was going to. Absolutely nobody. Don't don't give me this. Everybody knew they were going to be the worst team in the major leagues. Zero. That's the amount of people in the world who honestly believed the Blue Jays would have the worst record in the major leagues through April. Zero. Hitting is surprising. But the bullpen is the bullpen it is. And the outfield, the outfield is, and first base is the first base it is. Like, they didn't fill the gaps. I think they knew, and I think they got people to buy expensive tickets, and now they don't have a good product on the field. Okay. Thank you, Matt. I appreciate the call. I appreciate the, the, you know, this isn't the Alex Jones show. Um, uh, tinfoil hats are not necessary. The, the very idea. Like, what's in it for them? Honestly, think to yourselves for a second. What's it? Why, why on earth would they want the team to be awful? Ticket money doesn't go in Mark Shapiro's pocket or Ross Atkins. Like, why? I get that you want to be mad at the new guys. I get that they're not the old guys. But come on. 